Good morning. And welcome to one and all, especially uh, visitors who, who are with us this morning. Uh, good to see everyone as we gather in God's house today. A beautiful morning the Lord has given us. As we gather today, we thank the Lord for the sunshine. Maybe you've seen some of the colors as you drive in for worship this morning. We thank the Lord for the colors of this year. It reminds us that things are changing once again as we go through the seasons. It reminds us that life continues to change as well. But as we gather today, we do have God's word that is our anchor in the midst of changes in life. And his word reminds us today that he's always working for our good. And so as we hear God's word read today and a message on that, we praise the Lord for his presence and the fact that he's always working for our good as we live as his people. So with that, we uh, worship our Lord today. Our order of service is printed in our bulletin. There we will find our songs as well as our liturgy for this day as well. With that, let us join our voices together as we sing our opening song for this day, which is, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. May the Lord bless us this morning. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now. As in thy presence, humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power, all power, surely is thine. Touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Hold o'er my being absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit till all shall see. Christ only always living in me. Please stand. As brothers and sisters in Christ, let us spend a few moments this morning greeting those around us. <clears throat> morning, Brady. Morning, Ron. Morning, Brian. Morning. Morning, Dylan. Morning, Derek. Morning, Teddy. Ooh. Good morning, Jordan. Good <laughs> morning, Daryl. How are you? Good. Good morning, Gene. Good morning again, Bill. Crosby, how are you? Good. Good morning. Levi, how are you? As we gather this day, we do gather in the name of our triune God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We rejoice to live in his kingdom. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God rules men and nations. He sets people in place according to his will, places rulers over them, bringing prosperity or creating disaster. We have heard... 
but we live in two kingdoms with privileges and responsibilities in both. While we live day by day in our temporal society, our priority in life is to live and to serve in the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. With that in mind, we come before our God today. Father in heaven, you bless us abundantly as Americans, and you hold us responsible for how we use our abundance. We confess that we are often selfish and self-congratulating instead of being grateful to you and generous to the needy. You bless us even more as American Christians. You make us stewards of the gospel and give us the means to share Jesus with the world. We confess that we are often short-sighted in this instead of making it our highest priority. Forgive us, Father. Help us to be responsible citizens of both kingdoms, knowing that you are at work in both. And hear the good news. The Son of God became the Son of Man to save us from our sins, giving himself as God's atoning sacrifice. We now enjoy living under his forgiving love day by day. Therefore, in his name, I say to you, your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, as God's children, let us give to our government and to our nation what citizenship requires. More than that, let us give to God and to other people what life in Christ's kingdom requires. Amen. We devote ourselves to work that is produced by faith, to labor that is prompted by love, and to endurance that is inspired by our hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. We continue with the words of Psalm 96. We'll sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Declare his glory among the nations. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, have mercy on us, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be sing seated as we sing the next song, Awesome God. his sleeves he wasn't putting on the ritz our god is an awesome god there is lightning in his footsteps and thunder in his fist our god is an awesome god and the lord he wasn't joking when he kicked him out of eden it wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood his return is very soon so you better be believing that our god is an awesome god our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God, our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. And with the goodness of the Lord, this in the void of the night, our God is an awesome God. 
He spoke into the darkness and created all the light. Our God is an awesome God. Judgment and wrath He poured out on Sodom. Mercy and grace He gave us at the cross. I hope that we have not too quickly forgotten that our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. From heaven above with wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. From heaven above with wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. <clears throat> On this, the 21st Sunday after Pentecost, our Old Testament reading comes to us from Isaiah, chapter 45, verses 1 through 7. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hordes in secret places that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know from the rising of the sun from the west and that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came <clears throat> to you not only in word but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, and you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Together we speak the Alleluia verse. Alleluia, you have been filled by him who is the head of all rule and authority. Hallelujah. Today's gospel reading comes to us from Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle Jesus in his talk. And they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you do not care about anyone's opinion. 
for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And he brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our service continues as we respond to the word of God with the word of God. We continue on page four. Governing authorities are God's servants. They represent him and are to serve him for the good of those they govern. They are to commend those who who work right, but they are also to bring punishment on wrongdoers. We need not fear their authorities if we do what is right, but if we do wrong, we need to remember that they do not bear the sword in vain. As Christians, we are obligated to submit to the authorities not only because of possible punishment, but also because we want to have a clear conscience. We are to give them what we owe them. If we owe taxes, we are to pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If we respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. In the end, however, as Christians, we cannot serve two masters. Inevitably, we will be devoted to the one and despise the other. We cannot give the priority place in our lives both to our Lord Jesus and to things that are just earthly concerns. As followers of Christ, we must set ourselves to seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, trusting that all our daily concerns will be cared for as well. We have a heavenly Father who knows exactly what we need and what we don't need. Our service continues as we speak the words of our faith found in the wording of the Apostles' Creed. This may be found in the back of our hymnal. We confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the local Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated. At this time, the children are invited forward for the children's message. <clears throat> Good morning. How's everyone today? Good. How many of you go to school? Everybody go to school? Yeah? Everybody go to school? Okay. So my question this morning is, why? (laughs) Why do you go to school? What do you think, Teddy? To learn. Exactly. So you go to school to learn, and you probably learn a lot of things. So tell me this morning, what are some of the things you're learning? Go ahead, Kyler. Math. Do you like math? Sorta? Good for you. Dylan? Writing. Writing. What else? Julia? Checking back here. Okay. What else you got, Teddy? Social studies. Yeah. So, writing, spelling. What else? Okay. Science. Good. Ash? Maybe a musical instrument along the way? What else you got, Dylan? Reading? Good. Very good. P.E. I always like P.E. Good. Art. Very good. Lots of stuff, right? Okay, last one, Kyler. Library. Just reading some more, things like that. Yeah, good. So we go to school for a purpose, right? We go to school to learn. 
when we learn all these different things. Let me ask you another question. Should we put into practice what we learn? Is there a point to learning things? I guess that's my question. Is there a point to learning things? Of course, right? So you learn how to read so you can read. You learn how to write and spell so you can actually write and spell, right? And you maybe learn art so you can draw, things like that. So we go to school not only to learn, but we go to school to learn things so that we do those things. To say it this way, we learn things that form and shape us. What we say, what we do, how we live, things like that. I wanted to kind of have us think about that this morning. Oh, I was going to say, so I brought some books with me here. So when I went to seminary, I uh, had a lot of books. <laughs> I ended up with lots of books. So I brought some books with me. Some of the books are small. Some of the books are medium-sized. Some of the books are big. You can almost like work out with some of the books like this here. But again, all the books are not only for learning, but they are for putting that learning into practice. So this big one is a Greek lectionary, uh, lexicon. It helps me when I translate Greek and stuff like that. So that's a big book that I've used. This one talks about pastoral theology, which, talks, which means that you learn stuff, how to be a pastor, and you put it into practice. But again, it's all things that are learned to put into practice that help us live in different ways. And today we're thinking about how God wants us to live. Our epistle reading touches on that. Uh, in our epistle reading today from 1 Thessalonians 1, Paul is talking to God's people, and he says in verse 6 and following, And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction, with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere so that we need not say anything. He goes on to say, You turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. In other words, this is saying God's people long ago learned. What do you think they learned? What do you think was their text? What was their textbook? Was it any of these? What do you think? What was the textbook? Go ahead, Dylan. The Bible, right. And so they didn't have it exactly the way we have it today, but yes, that was their textbook to learn about Jesus, to learn about how to be God's people, to learn how to live. So again, they learned, but they put that into practice. That's what Paul is saying here. They're putting their learning into practice. Well, what do you think that means for us today? So, number one, our textbook, two is the Bible, right? And so it's important that we learn. That we learn God's Ten Commandments that we learn how he calls us to live, uh, that we learn about him, right? And so learn how to love others, forgive others, things like that. It's important for us to learn that and then put it into practice. So then loving God, obeying our parents, doing good things, forgiving others. But the big thing I'd like to talk about today, the most important thing to learn, what do you think the most important thing to learn is in the whole Bible, the most important thing? Julia, go ahead. Jesus, that's exactly right. Right. All the Bible points to Jesus. And not just about him, but what he's done for you and for me, for all of us. That he's died for our sins, that he has won our salvation. And so through faith in him, we are forgiven, we are saved, we are loved. And all of that then, his love for us, forms what we do. Right. Forms what we do, how we live, what we say, to be God's people, as we hear about in our reading today. So, as we go through life, we learn a lot of things. And the most important thing, learning about Jesus, our textbook is the Bible, as we live as God's people. Let's close our time with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, help me learn more about you so that I live for you. Amen. All right. Thanks, guys, for coming up. Our sermon song today is The Battle Belongs to the Lord. Battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. Hooray, hooray. 
power and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. When the power of darkness comes in like a flood, the battle belongs to the Lord. You'll raise up a standard, the power of His blood. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. When your enemy presses in heart, do not fear. The battle belongs to the Lord. Take courage, my friend, your redemption is near. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory. Grace, mercy, and peace to you. From God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we look at today's Old Testament reading from Isaiah 45, it should cause us to stop and say, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Hold on. What is going on here? As we look at the first verse of today's reading, It begins by saying, thus says the Lord, which of course is fine. He's telling us here that the Lord is speaking through his word. But the first verse goes on to say, thus says the Lord to his anointed, which also of course is fine. In various ways and places, God in the Old Testament anointed people to be priests and kings and prophets too anointed them, which means that he chose them and set them apart to do his work. At this point, we might say, yeah, all is fine and okay. But then today's, uh, the first verse of today's reading goes on to say, thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus. And this is where today's reading seems to go off course. To Cyrus? To Cyrus, who was a Persian king? To Cyrus, who was an unbelieving, ungodly, and evil person, we might say, why would God call Cyrus? Set him apart. To anoint him to do the Lord's work. For as God's word tells us today, Cyrus did not know the Lord. In verse 4 for today, God is speaking to Cyrus and he says, You do not know me. And so as you look at today's God's word for us today, we have to notice that it's telling us something. God's word is showing us something. And the big picture is to say that God is always at work for his people. And to narrow that down a little bit more, It's showing us that God is at work even through evil people. God is at work for his people. So as we look forward beyond today's text, and Isaiah is writing today's text about 200 years before Cyrus comes on the scene. As we hear what Isaiah is saying today as he is talking about what God would do through Cyrus, we can fast forward. And we see what God does through Cyrus. That God uses an unbelieving, ungodly, pagan king to free his people from their exile. To Babylon, to the Babylonians. The outcome is recorded for us in the book of Ezra. Ezra chapter 1, verses 1 through 3 say in part, The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and also put it in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord, God of heaven, has given to me all the kingdoms of the earth. 
me, has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever is among you of all his people, may his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, to rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. This is important for us to hear this morning because at times it's hard to see how God is working for his people. At times it's really hard to see how God is working for his people. In general, as we live in our country today, it's easy to see how it's changing, right? And in a sense, we might say we no longer find ourselves as Christians on the inside. Or to say it this way, our Christian worldview no longer takes center stage. And so oftentimes we find ourselves on the outside looking in. And with that in mind, we see how our Christian beliefs are marginalized. And us, along with our Christian beliefs, maybe find ourselves being marginalized too. And so as we find ourselves on the outside looking in, We maybe find ourselves asking ourselves the question, where do we go from here? And more specifically, the culture that we find ourselves in is tearing God's good design for life apart. His good design of family is being torn apart. His good design of marriage is being torn apart. With his good design of parents, simply being parents, is being torn apart. His good design of human sexuality, being torn apart. His good design of church, his good design of government, his good design of natural law, too, we might say, is being torn apart. God's good design that he gives as the author of life. As we see things around us being torn apart in all sorts of different ways, we are left to say, where is God in all of this? What is he doing as things go on around us? Well, the answer to such questions take us back to God's word. And specifically, the answer to these questions take us back to God's word that we have before us today. Again, in general, God's word reminds us that he is always working for our good, the good of his people. And moreover, he is always working for his people, even at times through evil people. In today's text, we hear again the Lord speaking to Cyrus as he says, in in summary, I'm going to do my work through you. And I'm going to do my work through you for the sake of my people. In verse 4 again today, the Lord is speaking to Cyrus as he calls him by name. And the purpose for all of this is for the sake of my servant Jacob, for the sake of Israel, my chosen. So God's word today is showing us something that we normally can't see. And what we normally can't see We can say it this way. What we normally can't see is that God's people do take center stage. You and I take center stage. Of course, not in the eyes of the world. No, we don't take center stage there. But you and I take center stage. Again, not in the eyes of the world. You and I take center stage where it matters most. You and I take center stage when it comes to the eyes of God. Zechariah 2.8 conveys this point as it says in part, For he who touches you touches the apple of his that is the Lord's eye. This conveys the point how sensitive God is to what happens to you, what happens to me. This is telling us that what happens to you, what happens to me, matters to the Lord God Almighty. Again, through all things, it's reminding us that God is always working for our good. 
even if we can't see it, and even when it comes to working through evil, unbelieving people. Well, maybe the best example of God working through evil and even through evil people is seen in Jesus. Arrest, his death, his crucifixion. For Jesus uses them and he uses it all for our salvation. Even though the religious leaders of Jesus' day did not know him, Jesus did use them. Even though the religious leaders did not know Jesus, he used them. He used them for his plan, his purpose. He used them for your sake, my sake. He used them that would lead to his death. He used them that would lead to his sacrifice of atonement. That takes away your sin, that takes away mine. That takes away our guilt, that takes away our shame. Jesus used such people for the sake of our salvation. And so for this reason, Romans 8.28 reminds us, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. And so as God's word shows us this today, then we are called to trust. To trust that he's in control of all things. To trust that he's working through all things, even evil things, even at times evil people. To trust that we as God's people do take center stage when it comes to the events of life as God directs them. And this takes faith. This takes faith because God does not always work according to our ways. He doesn't always work according to our expectations. And a fictional story that maybe you have heard before bears this point. So the story goes. A man who was in his home was in imminent danger because of a raging flood. So being in imminent danger of this raging flood, he prays to God. And as he prays to God, he is convicted in that prayer that God will save him. Soon a boat comes along. But yet as the boat comes along, he waves it off and he says, no, that's okay, God will save me. And the boat goes. In a matter of minutes, another boat comes along and he does the same thing. No, that's okay. God will save me. And finally, when the man finds himself up on his roof because the raging floodwaters are rising below, a National Guard helicopter comes along and he does the same thing. No, that's okay. God will save me. Well, sadly, shortly after the helicopter leaves, the house is swept away and the man dies. And as the man finds himself at the gates of heaven, he wants to know why he died. He wants to know why the Lord didn't save him. To which the Lord responds, Well, I sent you two boats and a helicopter. What more were you expecting? The story reminds us of two things today as we think of his word. Number one is God's people. The Lord is always working for our good. Number two, God is oftentimes working for our good in ways we don't expect. So even though we cannot always see how God is working, we are called to trust. To trust that he is, to know that he is, that he's working for our good, that he's working for our sake. And not only that, but as we trust the Lord, that he's always working for our good, it moves us to live out our faith, to do what the Lord calls us to do, to live out his design of life. That'd be his design in family, his design of marriage, his design of being godly parents, his design of human sexuality, to be the church of God, to be a good citizen, 
even of a government that is broken in many ways. To live God's design so that the world around us may see, that the world around us may know of the true God as we live in Him. Often, this is difficult. Often, this calls us to trust things that we can't see. And often, this calls us to bear our crosses. To bear our crosses as God calls us to live against the flow of our culture. But that is what our God-given faith does. That is what our God-given faith does as it holds to His promises, as it lives in His strength. That is what our faith does as we live in our Lord. As we live out our faith in our Lord, one day we will see everything that God has been doing. One day we will see and fully know how God really is God. For the Lord is preparing for us a homecoming too. A heavenly homecoming where everything will be made right again. And then we will see everything the Lord has been doing, then we will know everything the Lord has been up to. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says it this way, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. Until that day, let us keep living out our faith in the One who works for us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our service this morning continues as we collect our offering. Once again, we ask all members and guests to please sign the record of fellowship forms found near the center aisle. In our prayers for this day, we include one additional prayer petition, and that would be for Chuck Evans, who has been hospitalized with multiple infections. And so we pray for his health and well-being for his recovery today as we pray for the hope of the people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Please stand. So we pray. God, our Father, you appointed Cyrus as your instrument to return your people to Jerusalem Uphold the authorities of our nation in wisdom and integrity, that we might live in peace with a good conscience. Grant that they would make salutary use of the taxes we render and lead us to recognize them as your instruments, honoring them as you command. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, your word today reminds us that you are always working for our good. Give us faith to trust you are working when we don't see it 
in faith to trust when you are working in ways that we don't expect. Fill us with peace that trusts you fully and peace that moves us to live for you, doing the things that you command, carrying our crosses in the ways that you allow. O Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our salvation, you deliver your Son's work through your word and power and in the Holy Spirit. Strengthen the church's pastors to proclaim your truth. Increase the faith of all who hear, that they may respond in love, steadfast in their hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all truth, from the rising of the sun to its setting, you make known your salvation in Christ. Bless fathers and mothers as they teach their children your word and your ways. Let them know that there is no God besides you, and so rejoice in your faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our help comes from you, who made heaven and earth. You preserve our life. Have mercy on those who seek healing from cancer, including Kenny, Jason, Daryl, Doug, and Josh. Grant health and recovery to Claire, Troy, and Chuck. Bless those whose earthly days appear to be short, nearing their end, with comfort, peace, and health, including Rosie, and work mightily in the midst of the war between Israel and Hamas. We pray, Lord, that you protect the innocent, thwart the plans of evil, bring healing to the injured, give peace to those who mourn, and restore peace as only you can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, bless our voters' meeting later today. Impress upon all of us the importance of the work that you would have us do as your church in our time and place. Show us clearly the work that you would have us do. Grant us the faith, the commitment, the abilities, and the determination to do it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, you are Emmanuel, God with us, so help us live in you. Today we pray for Marv, Amy, Ryan, Olivia Swanson, Mike, Bethany, Madison, Gabby, and Bailey Tice, Carlos and Lindsay and Thaddeus Torres. Give them wisdom to know your will, abilities to do your will, and strength to carry out your will. Fill their days with faith, trust, and peace, knowing the power of your love and the full measure of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have loved us with an everlasting love and have called us to life in the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we may eagerly believe in him, trust his love, and stand firm in our faith to the end. Then we will truly overcome the world and boldly proclaim salvation in Christ alone. We pray in his name, who laid down his life for us and for all, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. His blessing encourages us to live for him in both of his kingdoms. We sing our closing song, My Life is in You, Lord. <clears throat> My life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you. My life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you. I will praise you with all of my life. I will praise you with all of my strength. 
with all of my life, with all of my strength. All of my hope is in you. My life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you. My life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, it's in you, in you, it's in you, it's in you. Please be seated.